Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and <coughs> welcome to the regular meeting of the Swanton Village Board of Trustees for Monday, Ju uh, July 26, 2021. Uh, first order of business is uh, our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Stand. Join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. These chairs move awfully rapidly, so maybe you better hang on to them when you sit. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> uh, agenda review. Uh, is there anything to be changed or added to our agenda this evening? Or deducted, no. maybe? No? Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I would like to have an executive session for real estate. Okay. That would be all right. That would be a change. Uh, item number four this evening, public comment. We don't have too much public, but do anybody want to say anything? So Jen Cortez is on for the energy committee update. Okay. Okay. Good. Welcome. So, um, next item, approve and accept the minutes from our Monday, July 12th, 2021 meeting. Uh, you'll have a copy of those in front of you. Um, what's your pleasure on the minutes? I would make a motion that we accept the minutes of July 12th. And a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve and accept from our minutes from Monday, July 12th. Any discussion on the minutes? Corrections? No? She did a good job. Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motions carried unanimously. Item number six, approve and accept our village warrants through Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. Uh, it's your pleasure with the warrants. I'll make the motion we approve the warrants through July 21st, 2021. And I will second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve our village warrants through Thursday, July 22nd. Uh, any questions on them? Just Discussion? one. Yes. Uh, Lynn, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, warrant number 69, uh, check number 83473, Peoples United. Uh, what was the dollar amount on that? Uh, $329,417. Those are bond payments in the water department. Okay. That works. I knew they were bond payments, but I didn't know which department they came, went into. <laughs> That's all I have. Anything else? Chris? No, nope, I'm fine. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion to approve and accept the village warrants, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion is carried unanimously. Item number seven, the Swanton Energy Committee update. Looks like we have Jennifer on on hold. Yeah, Who, no, just, who's gonna start with that, well, Reggie? Take just a quick, uh, quick moment and introduce uh, Jen Cortez. Jen, uh, helped to revitalize the uh, energy committee. Uh, got a call from uh, the planning commission that said uh, they have a member and uh, they wanted to re revitalize the energy committee. So <laughs> I met with Jennifer and uh, here we are. So she'll talk about where we are and uh, what event we have coming up. Okay, well, welcome Jennifer. And uh, what would you like to tell us this evening? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to just share that we have event planning going on for this Wednesday from 3.30 to 6.30. We'll be hosting an EV test ride event. So as you probably are aware, vehicles are the largest impact to transportation in Vermont for the greenhouse gas impact aspect. So in my job, my nine to five job, I've coordinated five EV events the year before um, COVID, so 2019 summer. And we got a lot of feedback from the customers and the general public that it was great to be able to go to an event, test drive a car without the pressure of a salesman and feeling like they needed to buy. So they could just jump in the car, take a ride with anybody or just inquire and have conversations. 
So we've coordinated with um, Barrett's Ford will be there, Bocant will be there. Actually, no. Bocant just let me know today that they do not have an electric vehicle on the lot because they just literally load them off the trailer and sell them the minute they arrive. They're going that quick for them. Um, Handys will be there with both a Chevy and a Toyota EV. And then I have a couple of private owner Tesla owners who will be there to do what they call ride experiences because they're privately owned. They don't have the insurance to allow other people to drive their car. So they will have two Teslas. We will have two Teslas there where people can take a ride and check it out. And one of them actually is Don Tugis. So um, oh, yeah. I can't think of his, yeah. you guys all know Don probably, or you know his parents used to own a little restaurant yeah. in town yeah. when I was a kid. So Don will be there with his. If nothing else, come and say hi to Don. <laughs> <laughs> So that'll be 3.30 to 6.30 at the Village Complex because you guys do have level two chargers right there. So we can also demonstrate how a level two charger works. It's super simple, just like a gas pump. But there's this fear of what do I do and how do I use it and I don't have any idea. So taking those fears away and taking the salesman pressure off will help people to get more comfortable in an EV. So I do anticipate, I'll see all of you guys there, right? Yeah. <laughs> At some point over that three hour period? Yes. Yeah. Um, funny you're, we're talking about EVs because uh, one of my customers has a, a Tesla, uh, the big Tesla, and he's leaving tomorrow morning for a trip to the West Coast. He's gonna drive it to San Francisco. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, he's had it for a few years and real happy with it. He uh, he has a winter place in, in uh, South Carolina and he drives the Tesla back and forth. And uh, my brother-in-law actually, uh, we saw him on uh, Saturday night. He drove his up from, he has a Tesla uh, L model. It's a, like a SUV. And he drove his yeah. up from Florida. He's real happy with it. He was, like you say, he was a little leery of it because it's his first electric car but uh, everything went real well. So I'm looking forward to Wednesday, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It, it's funny, because I had a conversation with somebody recently who was like, yeah, but I gotta stop and charge it. I'm like, don't you have to stop and put gas in your car? Yes, right, like, right. No different, and now cars have, you know, 300, 350 mile range. So just yeah. like your car, you get about three to 400 miles to your tank. Yes. Same concept. It just takes you a little bit longer to gas up right. than it does, and, does a gas car vehicle, but yeah. just a little bit longer. It depends on what station you're plugging into and what your radius factor is. So I think just having the conversations and chatting with people to help them understand the simplicity of an EV. Wow. Actually, quick kind of side story. I had a conversation last week with the gentleman who owns 14 Star, who's also, um, I don't know what the commander in chief is at Camp Johnson, not Camp Johnson, the one in Jericho. So he's the commander in chief in the, the Jericho training facility, and he just bought a Mustang Mach E, which um, Barrett's Ford will have their Mustang Mach E there for you guys to check that out. It's a super fun vehicle. But so when he bought the car, his wife said to him, You know, you're going all electric, that's fine, but you know, that's on you. I've got my gas powered. That was last Saturday. And on Tuesday, she said, When do I get by? <laughs> <laughs> Four days later, she already wanted her electric vehicle. So oh, they're great. super fun. Great. So, okay, we'll look forward to uh, Wednesday for sure. So. I'll see then. Okay. So, just side note too, Jen is a born and raised proud Swantonian as well. So, yeah. <laughs> my maiden name is Yando. You probably know my parents cooking. Oh yes, yes. Yep. You look I, uh, familiar. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Good yourself. Good. So, <laughs> so okay. So, we're looking forward to Wednesday and hope everybody else gets the message. That one's it's on Facebook, isn't it's it? It's on Facebook. Uh, we've got postings around. Uh, yeah. It's also on uh, Efficiency Vermont's website right. and VEIC's uh, uh, Facebook. Oh, good. Hey, Jen, one. Put it on their Facebook page today as well. And it was in the paper yesterday. Today. Today. Yeah. I haven't seen the paper today yet. Tomorrow. No. So that's where that's where yeah. Dave Roberts from Dev <coughs> thought was the paper. Okay. Uh -huh. Jen, quick question. Yes. Um, will you have, um, I guess I want to call it a map of where the EV stations are located within Franklin County? Um, there is an online map that I can have my iPad with me and I can show people. Um, we can also print one out probably. 
So for those who drive an EV, um, there's an app called PlugShare. People download PlugShare, you enter your zip code, and it tells you where their stations. One of the key things to be, a, to be known, I guess, is your local people are gonna charge at home because that's the cheapest place to charge your car, right? Plug into your electric, pay your normal Swanton Village, Greenmount Power, BEC electric rate versus public chargers. Um, but the misconception is that there's no place for me to charge my car. Um, so there are, like, it, so my job job, I work at Greenmount Power, uh, 2014 and 2015, I placed 42 charging stations throughout the state of Vermont. 14 of them are fast chargers, level three charging, and then the rest of them are level two chargers. So there are chargers available, but it's one of those things that we don't necessarily look for it until we need to know where it is. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and actually there's three in Franklin County. There's three fast chargers at Maple Fields over by Collins Curley. They just put those in last year during COVID. Um, so there's, and there's level twos downtown St. Albans as well. So there's, the expansion need is there. I don't deny that at all. But for the most part, those people who live in Swanton and commute in Franklin County are probably gonna do the majority of their charging at home. Gotcha. But yeah, have a map available and more information. The Drive Electric Vermont, so I encourage everybody to visit Drive Electric Vermont's website. They have a lot of great resources out there. They even have a tool that you can put what utility it serves you, what kind of car you're looking for, what your income bracket is, and it will tell you what incentives are available to you. Because the little unknown factor probably or less known is like you can buy a brand new Nissan Leaf or a brand new Chevy Bolt with about seven, eight, nine, maybe eight to ten thousand dollars in incentives off that car. So you can get a thirty-eight thousand dollar car for twenty-eight thousand today. Oh, brand new. Wow. Well. Oh, interesting. So, well, that's that's good. We look forward to uh, to Wednesday and see how many we can sell. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's well. a great impact on our PUC requirements for Tier Three. So, yep. as we can that happen, we can help Swanton to to hit those goals. Yep. And any ideas that you guys have for the Energy Committee to run forth with, we are open to ideas and suggestions to start moving things forward faster. Yeah, that okay. was one thing I want. It's it helps with our tier three requirements by from the state of Vermont. So yeah. yeah. It's the biggest impact short of solar or wind turbines, <laughs> hydro generation type things. It is the biggest residential impact you can make. Uh-huh. Okay. Good enough. Good enough. Cool. Well, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll go finish mowing the lawn. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jen, thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye. Um, so uh, Wednesday, 3.30 to 6.30. 6.30? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, Reggie. Yeah. Number eight, Merchants Row Bridge Repair Update. <laughs> so I yeah. hear that all night long. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we did, uh, the guys went over and inspected the bridge today, got a hold of the welder. We're going to get the welder back up because the welds that they had done uh, broke loose. So we're going to weld it straight across. Hopefully we're going to get that done this week. Uh, they've got a couple of projects they're doing to get ready for some paving. But uh, when the welder gets freed up, he's going to come in and do the work. Who's they? Uh, our guy is Public Works. Oh. Because okay. we're going to need traffic control and to help the guy out with uh, So are we getting any help from VTRAN? So we got a $175,000 uh, structures grant. Uh, I did talk to the engineer. Uh, we're having a meeting on Wednesday to talk with him about the repairs. Uh, basically, he said that uh, probably wouldn't get the true repairs this year, probably in the spring, but we'll at least get a fix to where his his uh, uh, theory is is that take the plates off once it gets cooler. Take the plates off when the bridge quits expanding and contracting. It still does some when it warms up, but fill the voids with asphalt and pack, oh, yeah. them, pack them right in there because then the bridge doesn't really need to do a whole lot of movement. Pack them full and then that'll last us till spring. And when the springtime comes, we'll, uh, we're gonna most likely, if we can't get any more structures money, you know, from the ARPA funds or from our region or from the state, because I've already talked to the state about more funds uh, to do the $550,000, we're gonna bond for it. 
so it'll be on the March ballot. Okay. okay. So the, the state of Vermont is suggesting this back in the asphalt this, uh, in there? The engineer is suggesting this. State and engineer. The engineer that, yeah, he's a bridge guy, so yeah. yeah. Not the state engineer, but our engineer. Okay. Okay. It's David Cull, I believe his name is. Okay, so I'll have to be a, be able to sleep without that clanging every time the truck goes on. So Hopefully when we get that uh, weld run straight across, because he did patches like this in sections, this time we're going to go straight across with it. Yeah. Good. Is there an opportunity to restrict traffic during times of the day? <laughs> Jeez, bro, did you see what happened <laughs> when they when they were out there on the bridge the other day? No. Freaking a, the list, the line from my street was beyond the, the cemetery farm place. Yeah, the, by beyond the farm, the the farms. Yeah, business. this weekend there was a trap. There was it's a tractor trailer a, oh, that's right, yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were at. Uh, past Barrette Ford, we were over at the old refuge area on those S-curves coming into the village. Yeah. And that's I would like to know twenty minutes true maybe. vehicle count on Route 78 going west. Going west or coming well, in? Either way. Ways. Just not 78 from up to the airport, but well, that, the one to New York. That bridge will tell you which way the most amount of traffic is because the eastbound lane is the one that gets hammered the most because the trucks are more abundant that way. So you notice last year, two years ago, we did my side of the bridge on that same lane. So the trucks have pounded it so bad that it's, it's ruining the other. So, But the other side of the bridge going west is, is not as bad. So. Yeah. But I just, you know, I just thought, you know, maybe we can, you know, talk to the state and say, look, between the hours of 9 and 5 at night. Haven't we got another culvert that needs replacing? Yeah. On 78 somewhere. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, it, just, you know, it, it doesn't little, make sense. I a mean, little thunder shower wa might wash it out. <laughs> yeah, drive the, drive, the, uh, <laughs> drive the traffic through the islands and watch what happens. Yeah. They got way more cold than they deserve. Anyway, I'll come in. okay, thanks, Reg. Sorry. Uh, item number nine on the agenda. Any other necessary business? Adam's got something to say. Saturday, car show this Saturday. Saturday come on is the down. Car. Good. This is going to be our 11th annual. I, we keep talking about last year, but there wasn't one. So. <laughs> I talked, to your, I talked to your traffic engineer this afternoon, and he's got everything under control. Good. going to be sunshine all day. Good. Jeff. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully. I'll talk to the CEO and uh, make sure he's on board with everything. Okay. So, but no, I'm looking forward to it, getting excited, and uh, it's, uh, it's long overdue. We should have had one last year, but... Yeah. We'll leave it at that. But well, there was a lot of people at the St. Albans show that were looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. So. Anyway. So, that's okay. all I got. Um, question. Did anybody get a report on how 4th Street get-together was on Saturday? I heard there were nine people. Oh, okay. So. I haven't heard any other than that, too. Okay. That's, that's all I've got. I know there on Front Porch Forum a uh, a survey went out on Front Porch Forum today from the committee. Uh -huh. You know, so that way if people wanted to do uh, you know do online thoughts and comments, they could. Yeah. So. Well, hopefully, they get more results from that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh, anything else under necessary business? Not for me. Okay. I, I, again, Lynn did a nice job and sent us the financial report. Can she just do a summary of how we're doing and how our collections are going and whatever else? Did you catch that, Lynn? 
<laughs> Says Lynn's iPad. <laughs> Talk to Lynn's iPad. She's there. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, sorry. Chris had a question on uh, the financials you sent out. Can, yeah. you just, can you just give us a summary on how we're doing? On our recouping our um, funds and... Things to notice is that I... Uh, I can do an adjustment today because there was a miscoding between the fire department and the police department. Um, right now, we're under collected a little bit on revenue from the electric department. Um, doing this from memory because my files are at work. And we're going to, uh, other than that, the numbers looked pretty good. We will be sending, I have the tax rate uh, developed grand list group so we're going to be uh, sending you know putting out for you guys to approve a tax rate that is less than what was in the annual report uh, diane go. will have that for you guys when she comes back from vacation for one of those meetings i don't know if she's going to do it the last probably the first meeting of august will be when you guys um, do that but overall i think we're doing pretty good um, on the grand scheme of things. Are we collecting back arrears on uh, electric water and wastewater? We have gotten to the point where we can disconnect water. We cannot yet disconnect electric. Uh, so the VRAP program is now live. It's been live. We had trouble with our portal. We were finally able to get into the portal last Friday. Um, Customers were calling because well, they were calling us and we were like, we can't get in. They were also calling the VRAP program and the VRAP program was telling them, um, you're in there, it's just your utilities not doing their job. So I kind of sent kind of a not so nice email <laughs> to the woman that's dealing with this at the state and said, this is what we're getting feedback. We can't see them in our portal. Like what they did was we created uh, an account, but at the state level, they put everybody in a different account, so they had to like disable the account I created, and then I still couldn't get into the account that they had created for us. So it was kind of a support wasn't super helpful. We finally got it going. Um, so we have to, that's going, the VCAP 2 program is now going um, for arrears also. And we had to resend, we had to send in um, modifications to our disconnect notice, which was filed on Friday, um, so that it's got <coughs> language for the VCAP and the VRAP program. And once the disconnect notices are approved, we will be able to send them out and then start disconnecting. So there's a lot of like different things going on. Yeah, sounds it. Are we able to on the on the delinquent electric bills, are we able to charge them interest or we have to keep it at the... At no, we do charge 1% interest on overdue bills. That's all? Is that down yeah, from what, from two that's years ago? Yeah, that's the tariff. Yeah, I remember that. Because that's through the PUC, so we can't do anything outside of what they have approved. Okay, I'm just... <clears throat> Just trying to get that out to the public. A bit. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? Yeah. Just the, our upcoming NEPA trip. Our what? NEPA trip. You still there? Oh, NEPA. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll call you back when the meeting's done. What? The upcoming NEPA trip. Yeah. Twenty second through twenty fourth. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. a reminder. So we won't have that. We won't have that twenty third trustees meeting because we'll be yeah. at the conference. Damn. I, again, I mentioned this before the meeting a little bit, but on the scoping study, there's got to be more than a, just a. There should be an, an, an accurate traffic count of how many cars actually pass through the village. Period. I mean, a real number, not an estimate, because that could be open to a lot of people's eyes. Second off, it's got to mention that the, the destruction and the number of trucks 
that pass over the bridge and pass over through our roads and, and actually are you know, damaging them and making them to some degree unsafe. So the study needs to address that in some manner. It can't just arbitrarily mention the fact that there's a few, a lot of trucks going through town, which is what it says the last time I read it. Yeah, because that's a that's a big deal. <clears throat> I think the last estimate was 10,800. It was the last traffic count they did, 10,800 a day. Trucks or cars too? Traffic. Traffic. And trucks were 16% of that? Yeah. Okay, make sure that's in the report yeah. with the date of when that study took place, if possible. Because, I mean, that... I don't think people, unless you go and sit down in the park, which I did, for a few minutes and like Neil was saying you can hear the bridge and you can tell the overweight trucks too they really make a bang and uh, <coughs> um, that does play a big effect in what's going on and if you if you're not downtown and, and, and stay there for a little while to actually witness it you kind of pass it off as not being a big deal but it's it's a wicked big deal I mean um, it's, it's I have a, a friend who lives in Woodstock and they had the same problem and they took care of it again they have big names and big money and big people in, in the legislature we're apparently the low man on the totem pole but the squeaky wheel gets gets mm -hmm. you know gets the action here we need to that report needs to make a big deal uh, i've been complaining tra about it traffic for, for and the, 10 and years the damage. So, yeah. say again so i've been complaining about it for 10 years i know but we're not complaining enough and that report can't belittle it it's got to make it one of the hallmarks of the issue period okay i'll take a look at the the original scope of the of the report okay okay um I see the art boards are being active. Is there any information regarding what's there's going on There's two boards there? up. Uh, there's two sides up on the board over by John's Bridge. Yeah. Very nice. Well, yeah, but they have painted two over sides. one side that I thought was nice. There's uh, two sides there? It's yeah. two-sided now. Yeah, there's another. Yep. One must have gone up today. No. Because no, uh, I came by Thursday uh, and Friday. It? Yeah, it was last week, Saturday? and I remember seeing Saturday? the second. There's one side with yeah, the, uh, the south side. Canoes, it's got I the think. bridge with the person oh, yeah, canoeing. Yeah, yeah. And the other side had a nice. Uh, I want to say a mountain scene. Mountain that's scene gone. with deer and stuff. Oh, and that's, that's gone, gone now. Yeah, it's white. That's gone. Oh, so somebody's changed it over then. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's blank. Yeah, there's not, the, the Must be they're going to reset the, it and go on the south side, and then yep. there's one down by the bridge too. Yep. Yep. But, they uh, they're installing. The did the second did that one by the bridge get installed? Yeah. Okay. Good. So but they haven't put anything on it yet. Huh. They have. We'll, have to see that, so. <coughs> I'll tell you it's what, though, we kept our word. It's yeah, all that matters. They they look nice too. I yep. Think. And they look very nice. Yeah. Span, I think, has done a good job. You yeah. know, and they're they're diligent. Um, I don't know that. Uh, I think the rules are going to scare some people, but that's okay. That's right. You know. It's supposed to but, be art. I think I think people. the black and white swan is okay, but it's right on the margin. It's art. Yeah. So, but I think you know Span's done a really good job managing this, monitoring it, and uh, you know yeah. I appreciate the rules and regulations. Yeah. So as I'm sure we all do. So do I. So. Okay. Okay. That Could being said, that. is there any other business to be brought up under necessary business? So, if not, uh, item number 10, uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss real estate. And personnel. I will make the motion and that we go into executive session at 7.30 to discuss real estate and personnel. <clears throat> okay. Second? Second. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, okay. We're in executive Anybody session. Anybody want to refill? Progress. Okay, we have uh, just come out of the executive session uh, to discuss personnel and uh, real estate. Uh, we just did some consideration of personnel. We 
uh, the real estate uh, involved a decision to get some bids for uh, clearing the property at the Riviera Hotel uh, lot, uh, the, the exterior cleaning, the brush and the trees, uh, uh, because we ha we're in anticipation of having a phase two assessment sometime in uh, September. So uh, we're gonna get <coughs> bids and consider that when, uh, so we can move forward with the cleanup of the Riviera. So I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Seconded. So we have a, a motion and a second to uh, consider bids for cleaning up the Riviera Hotel property. Uh, we've already discussed it, so all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous, how about that? Good, <laughs> so, so we'll see if we can make some progress on cleaning that piece of property up. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn this regular meeting of the Swanton Village Board of Trustees for Monday, Ju Ju July 26, <laughs> 2021. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, that's unanimous too. Thank you for being with us this evening. Good night. <laughs>